stands on her own two feet as a qualified teacher and lecturer. She has attained a master's degree in education, leadership, and management. If that is not enough, this wife and mother is also a qualified and registered counsellor, working across the private, public, and volunteer, voluntary sector. And just to add the pepper to the meal, she has her own private counselling practice. Amen? Yeah. Her continued aim and determination is to add souls to the kingdom. I am proud to introduce to you Miracle Church of God in Christ, our speaker of the hour, the wife of Delroy, the mother of Taisha, Shade, Rayma, Sapphire, on this Mothering Sunday. With the welcome back to the platform this morning. Amen. Please stand and let's give her a miracle welcome this morning. Amen. Amen. Church. Amen. Well prepared. I've got to get everything out because I think it's very important that when we're reading and studying the word, that we are reading and studying the word. There's many versions, there's many um, ways that we need to read it to understand it. So greetings all to all my brothers and sisters, Pastor Paul, all the mothers and all those that represent mothers. Yep. So, I was, I got just introduced as a speaker of the hour, but I have about 15 minutes. Okay. So, the switch, <laughs> yeah, come back later. I may or may not be here, but still. So, the scripture today is Proverbs 31, 10 to 30. <laughs> and so, I think it's very important that when we're studying the word, that we go to the word. So if you can, could you take your Bibles to Proverbs 31? Now this scripture, often we will look at it and look at it as the perfect wife, the perfect woman, the perfect mother. Why I'm very conscious of that this scripture talks about a woman who considers the Lord as her everything. Which then means that this scripture applies to men and women. It applies to the, the mother, the sister, the aunt, the grandma, the granddad, the father, brother, the uncle. It in, encapsulates every aspect of who we are. So, I will ask you a question first and I would like you to consider it and maybe consider turning to, your, to some person sitting beside you, behind you, or maybe just consider yourself. So, this godly woman, who does she put her trust in? Just hold on to that. But you are approached by a member of the public. What do you say to that person when they say, I am a millionaire, I have, I have my children who are at home with me, I have you know, my own businesses, I have you know, a number of cars. I have all of these things, all these things that, that person talks about. What do you have that is so different as a member of the body of Christ? What do, what do you have? What, what's your answer? What do you have? Amen. So we have, I heard salvation, I heard peace. Uh, see, these are some of the words that I had down. So, in my, so, what do I have? I have salvation, eternity, peace, security, and I'm stress-free. I'm just going to give you an example of what it was for me prior to Christ. So just before I do that, I'm just going to remind us of what the word is. So, Proverbs 31 starting from verse 10, who can find a virtuous and capable wife? It asks who. There's a question in there which I'll come back to. She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Just so you know, I'm reading from the NIV. She finds woolen flax and busily spins it. She is like a merchant's ship, bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plans the day's work for her servant girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it with her earnings. She climbs a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes her dealings as profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread. Her fingers twisting fibre. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arm to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household for her house, where everyone has warm clothes. She makes her own bedspreads, she dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. 
Her husband, well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders, she makes him be belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly de de declare her praise. Take back to verse 10. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? And the answer is there already for you. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. So not only does it ask you the question, who, who is a virtuous woman, who, who is a strong man, who, who is a capable individual, it is he or she who fears the Lord and will be greatly praised. Often, prior to Christ, I, you know, I was enjoying life as I thought. I was... Um, doing the things I needed to do, I acquired skills, I maybe, I, you know, I, I experienced new experiences, I travelled. It was great, or was it? We just said that, what do you tell the person who says that they have everything, they have Christ? And the response we said was actually, I have salvation, eternity, peace, security, and I'm stress-free. And that was the problem before Christ. I was not stress-free, I was troubled, I was burdened, and only when I look back now, I realise all those things I had acquired, <laughs> they came with great stress. Yeah? yeah? So, as much as I said I recognise this as Mother's Day, and there's respect and honour for the mothers, I want you to be aware that this scripture here, Proverbs 31, encapsulates men, women, children, uncle, aunts. Um, and when I look at any scripture, I always look, I hope to look at it from the perspective of God himself. What was he trying to say? What was he trying to teach us? When we read a scripture, I don't think we should ever read it once and think we know it. Every time we read that same scripture, there's revelation with it. He himself is described in Luke 13, 34 and Matthew 23, 37 as uh, he, he says, I wanted to take you under my wing as a hen takes her chick and protects. So he himself, we can compare to Proverbs 31. He provides for us, he's a carer, he's a nurturer. And again, all that she did, the woman of Proverbs 31, all that we do should not be in our own strength, but in the strength of the Lord. When we sometimes are challenged and we look at our own unsaved family members, sometimes we feel that there's a sense of loyalty and obligation because they are our blood relatives. But remind ourselves who shed his blood for us and who have we accepted as our Lord and Saviour. Yeah? The God himself has described himself as the hen that takes in her chicks. We are his chicks. So often we can become struggling. We can struggle. We can become entangled in our own thoughts and processes you know this this is my biological mother this is my biological father this is my biological sister here is my godly family and we, and we are sometimes torn but actually what i want to remind you is jesus responded when asked who is my mother and brother those who do the will of god yes. that is where we will find our peace and that is where we will find our security I, it was really interesting as i was reading proverbs 30 um, sorry 10 to 30 I actually thought, I wonder, I always feel that it's important that you read the scripture in context. So actually it's really interesting if I go to the Passion Translation and it says, at the start of Proverbs 31, does anybody remember who was asked to, um, who was asked the question of Proverbs 31? No? So the person actually sharing this, if I just get it there, it was King Lamel, and these were the royal words of wisdom. And he said, these are inspired words of my mother who taught me. Yeah. Yes? So I thought it was very apt that we're sharing this on Mother's Day, and actually he's repeating back the words that he shared with his mother. Now, often we will come against struggles, and one of the things I've become very aware of, of the many baptisms I've attended, and my own baptism, is that often we will feel that as we are coming into this family or this fold and we've accepted salvation, we seem to think that the struggle's going to be worse or it's going to get hard or the enemy's going to attack us far more so. What I'm hoping to share 
as I flip that on its head, why is the struggle harder? It's not. It's because we're not actually focusing on the peace of God. Why is the struggle harder? Because we thought, thought we could do it in our own strength. I'm saved now, and therefore I'm able to do it alone. He said man should not be alone. He meant that his bride should stick with him. So I'm just going to give you some examples of times that I've been under attack. And I know that time is short, so I will share these scriptures. In order to do the will of God and be recognised as his, uh, one of his own, no, not just a creation, but his child, it's very important that the struggles that we go through as a mother or as a father, as a brother, as a sister, or even as a child. I work with a lot of young people. Um, I work with an array of people, and sometimes I am faced with discussion of self-harming. I'm faced with discussion of suicide. And these are from very, very young people that have not even passed their teens. And I find it quite painful, and I work through it, I pray through it, so that I am able to give myself to them. So just, I'm hoping to leave with you with a number of scriptures. So when I was personally attacked, uh, whether it be physically, emotionally, I held on to the promise of 2 Chronicles 2015, the battle is not yours. I could have been attacked, I could have got emotional, I could have become distressed, but the battle wasn't mine. That was my first thing I had to learn. Sometimes we are upset that our reputation is attacked. Let me remind you, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1.21 As you're aware, I'm a mother of four children, age 2 to 17. They come with their own issues and their problems across different ages. So when children stray or do their own things, I want you to remind yourself of Genesis 27. This was actually Abraham and referring to his wife. I adapted that scripture. I was desperate. So sometimes we have to take scriptures and apply them to ourselves. It's the only way it's going to work. So I meditate on return, my daughter, and I shall pray for you. Look up that scripture, Genesis 27. Read the other part of it. If you're not going to listen, I'll leave it to God. When the enemy attempted to separate me from my husband, we went through quite an uh, upheaval. There was a period of time I... I cried myself to sleep every night. And I was reminded of Genesis 2.18. It is not good for man to be alone. It was not good for Ravinda to be alone. And therefore, when, when this came up, I had to remind myself and I had to remind God that you gave me this promise. In fact, you created male Athena to remind me I shouldn't be alone. And there we were together. Also, Matthew 19, 6, let, man, let no man put asunder a, a couple. I'm just giving you bits of the scripture because I will hope that if you want, I can give you the scriptures and you can take them away, whatever your concerns or struggles are right now. I genuinely believe and know there is a word in here. Yep. When your liberty is at stake, your freedom, maybe you are alleged to have done something, maybe you are taken away, maybe you are arrested. Hold on a minute. What happened in Acts 12 with Peter? He, he, he was punished. He, his liberty was taken for preaching the gospel. The Acts 12, there's a whole chapter there for you. Quite some time ago, I miscarried not once but twice. I had to remind God and I had to tell the enemy, hold on, the promise says, Genesis 9-7, go forth and multiply. I give you Sapphira. I'm telling you now, when you come under attack, Hold fast to these scriptures, hold fast to his word until you see the result. I can say I've seen the result. There are many things I'm still working towards and many things I won't let go. Jacob didn't let go. Amen. So when hungry, what does the scripture say? He has not seen the righteous forsaken. Psalm 37 to 25. I have been in a position prior to Christ and after Christ due to death, different circumstances, being told I might lose my home. I, I, I was, uh, there was a notice of eviction put to me. What did I say? Joshua 24, 13. Land I did not lay before will be given to me. Ezekiel 28, 16. I will live securely. I cannot live in a struggling household. I cannot live when I'm thinking, hold on, what happens tomorrow? What happens next week? I can't live like that because I've got four other people watching me. Well, at the time, maybe two or three. But I've got a household watching me. I've also got those unsaved watching me, wondering, hold on, she's going through this. Where's her Jesus now? He said, hold fast to my scripture. I've also been in a position when I've been without a job. And I know the struggle is uh, real, the struggle is hard, and it's disheartening. It can get you down. Two scriptures, it got me down, it got me depressed, but he said, 
you shall live and not die. You shall be healthy, healed by my stripes. But also he says, Colossians 3, 23 to 24, uh, working to the Lord. So I started volunteering. I worked like I was making money. I worked like I was receiving an income. I wasn't, but it was fine. I worked as though I was because I was working unto the Lord. He has blessed me now. I have my own private practice. Yes. I'm still standing for more. Deuteronomy 6 11. He will give me houses filled with things that, that I did not even pay for. He will provide, and that is his promise. I will eat and I will be satisfied. The promise is I will be satisfied. I take you back to Proverbs 31. The only way this will happen is those who will feel, who will feel the Lord will be greatly praised. Coming back to health, it says Psalms 8, 118 to, uh, verse 17. I shall not die but live. I've made notes of other aspects. I saw um, Kerry in the back there and I was reminded of his dad. When you hit, get to the point, you see he might get to the point he's going to get to his exams. And it is very stressful. You think, I can't remember. There's a scripture that says, I'll bring back to memory that all that you've meditated on. Every aspect of your life, everything you're going through, I cannot emphasize enough. He says, I will do. He has promised. And is he not a God that he, <laughs> he shall not lie? And one of the things that I think is very important as, we, as I bring this to a close, he has almost also promised you salvation, not just for you, but your whole household. Amen. At 1631. You will be saved, you and your household. You may have loved ones out there right now. Um, I just remembered something else in terms of school. I remember once Mother Carr said to me, she said, it doesn't matter where your children are going or studying, it doesn't matter where they are. If they're learning it at home, then it doesn't matter who the influences are. Then yes, they may stray, but it's what we're teaching them. So I want you to remind yourself to be and an example of Proverbs 31, when you wake up, sometimes it's stressful, sometimes you might need your coffee, sometimes you woke up and it just feels like a bad day. Remind yourself of the person you lay beside or the person who lives in the house with you, that they are at times the only opportunity for them to see Christ. I'm going to close right there. I hope I've left you with enough word to despite any situation you're going through, that there is a word that you can hold on to and hold on to it and do not let go of it until you get those promises. I also hope and pray that when you are thinking of any unsaved family members, that you will hold on to Acts 16.31, remind yourself, you and your household. I just wanted to close with this, that as we are working tirelessly and he continuously energizes us that as we continuously work tirelessly to bring souls into the kingdom and share salvation this is the prayer that i said last night and this is the prayer it's from song of songs and it's uh, chapter four father then may your waking breath blow upon my life until i am fully yours breathe upon me with your spirit wind stir up the sweet spice of your life within me Spare nothing as you make me your fruitful garden. Hold nothing back until I release your fragrance. Come walk with me as you walked with Adam in your paradise garden. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone.